Are you waiting for the black swan event? If so, what that means, it, well, if you're applying your trading to this uh, event in the future, what that means is you're not trading the market that actually exists. You're trading a market that you think is going to be there in the future. This is one of the biggest things that I got caught up in when I was initially starting investing. I started investing probably three years ago now, um, like say February 2018. I convinced my parents to buy a bunch of gold and uh, and gold was around like 1300 right there. I mean, it was a great, great investment. But my thought process uh, at that point was preparing for the black swan event and that was a good idea because I wasn't really trading you know that was more of an investment but you need to differentiate these two things in order to be successful in the investment or trading world so we're going to set out different uh, strategies that apply more to investing for the long term uh, versus investing or trading for the short medium term. I mostly do swing trading, so I'm in and out of trades every couple days, sometimes intraday. So a lot of the time, uh, a lot of people I you know I'm involved with that I follow, um, or that I used to follow, say someone like Peter Schiff, um, they're usually way too caught up in this black swan mindset, um, and I think that's what prevents them from maximizing returns in the market. Um, so what is the, what is the black swan? Well, the black swan is something that triggers, uh, say, the collapse of the financial system. Something unavoidable that can't be uh, stabilized by, say, the Federal Reserve with liquidity. Something that, something like war, you know something like a huge natural disaster, huge, huge natural disaster, something like uh, assassinations, say, of world leaders, or, um, I don't know, there's a lot of different black swans, but the, the point of a black swan is that it triggers this multiplicative process where things cascade uh, like a domino effect, but the dominoes get bigger and bigger. Um, and in order to to properly position yourself the only way to do it is to have have your investments set up beforehand right because it all happens instantly right uh the black swan will will happen so fast that you it'll really happen you know overnight say um so what are investment assets that that prepare you for this black swan event well gold silver Platinum, palladium, all the noble metals. Um, Bitcoin, would, crypto would be would be one of these. Um, although you could say that it's a little more susceptible to something like uh, an electricity problem, natural disaster. So I do think uh, as a black swan hedge, uh, physical things are a little bit better uh, from that respect. But uh, Bitcoin will still be a lot better than, say, stocks or um I mean, pretty much anything, bonds, um, whatever other investment vehicles you can think of. Um, but also in this category are are other things that prepare you for black swan events. And a lot of people don't really put these in the category of investments. But when I think of an investment, I think of what what kind of return can this give me, right? So even if there's a 0.01% chance of something happening, if I can spend $100 or 200 or 300 or 400 and hedge against that possibility, it might be worth it because the magnitude of that uh, of that possibility, if it does happen, the effect that it'll have is so great that even if that ends up being lost money, I don't view it as a bad investment. I view it as being logically prepared and investing for what could possibly happen. So within this category, you have things like storable food, water filtration you know you can get out of a river uh, and seeds you know so these are three basic things and i have some books that i keep you know to if if things really go down the shitter i can reference those to understand how uh how to deal with the situation but you know these are four things that you can probably set yourself up for with a couple thousand dollars even less i mean you could spend like 500 on storable food 100 on seeds 
uh, you know, 20 on a book, 30 on a book, and uh, a couple hundred on air f or water filtration. And that will, that would probably be a prudent investment, depending on who you are. Now, obviously, if you only have you know 3,000 to invest, this is not for you. Um, but if you're if you're a family, say, and you have a big 401k, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense to investments like this, along with the other ones I mentioned before. These are preparing you for the black swan um, and preparing you for the collapse of the dollar, which is, um, you know, going to be triggered probably by some sort of black swan event. It will be a planned black swan. Don't get me wrong, because, you know, it's not like black swans are random. You can predict that they're they're going to happen. But understanding who's the ones controlling the, the black swan events. Uh, they can trigger things like natural disasters using Nikola Tesla's earthquake technology. You can look that up um, and a variety of other things. COVID-19 was some sort of, you know, you could say it was a black swan. It was uh, intentionally released and it had a very you know disastrous effect and is still having a disastrous effect. So back to what I was saying earlier, though, if you're a trader, you don't want to be playing your investments based off of these these long term things. You can't predict them. Um, with nearly the amount of accuracy that you would need to in order to properly trade in the short term. So um, how, how do I balance this? Well, I know that once the black swan happens, stocks are probably going to go down the shitter along with a lot of these other assets. Um, but what am I doing right now? Buying calls on the market. I mean, the market was down a lot earlier. I bought right at the open. I'm almost even for the day. You know, I was down down a fair amount. So that's the dynamic that we're in right now. That's the market that's right in front of us right now. What the market's going to be tomorrow, I'm going to reevaluate that on a daily basis. And I'm going to use the information that I have to, to trade within that. But another place that I got caught up was, again, playing off of this long term thing, I would I would buy too much paper gold, paper silver, ticker GLD, SLV. Or, or gold mining stocks, stuff like that, I would buy too much of these things, um, anticipating that when I'm not trading the market in front of me. And the market in front of me with, with gold and silver specifically is that they're rigging it and they constantly rig it. Uh, and, and they can do so um, not infinitely. There will come a time where it has to readjust, but they, they're very powerful and um, it's not that, that big of a deal for them to rig these markets. And so until I see that dynamic shifting or, or I see a specific point in time where um, I think that they're going to allow the price of these assets to rise, um, that's when I start getting in on those. And I am in SLV right now, um, calls right now. So I think that's, that's enough. So just uh, don't deny reality. You know, just because we know the black swan is coming doesn't mean that you should be trading uh, around it. Chances are you're going to lose money. you got to trade the market in front of you, pull the profits, um, and do that. As long as you're pulling out your profits, don't be a pig. Don't keep your money too tied up in the market. Always keep cash. Be safe. Um, you're going to make a lot more money, and your you're also mental health will be way better because it's so destroying when you, when you see these things happening. And you know in the back of your mind, oh, they're rigging gold. Oh, they're rigging silver. And you keep wanting to fight against that, but you're just one person, right? You can't match the power of these banks controlling the, the price of these assets. So, uh, you know, again, keep that in mind. Uh, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow. Actually, will I? I might not. I might not see you tomorrow, but I'll definitely see you Sunday. All right, have a good one.